Alright, now that we've gotten some of that technical stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into working with our groom spines. So, for right now, I'll actually select his overall head, not just the bald cap. Let's go here to Generate, come down to Interactive Groom Splines, and go to our Option box. So, just as with XGen, you do have to set a description. We'll just call this one maybe Test01 for right now. Now, this Option Generator seed will just randomize the hairs. This density is the amount of hairs we're going to get, and to give you an idea of what this means, you can see currently this head is going to receive 6,262 splines. If I were to reduce this density to 1, you can see it's just 626 splines. Down here, the length will be how long each spline will be by default, 1 unit, the width, 0.1 unit, and how many points per hair, kind of the CV count. You can see the default is 5. If we go ahead and reset this, you could see that what we saw earlier was in fact the defaults. So by default, I'm going to go ahead and test one back in here again. It's going to place hairs all over this head. I'll go ahead and hit create here. And there are a lot to create, but it shouldn't take too long at all. You can see there we go. And you can see the hairs do get placed everywhere. So you can imagine why we're probably going to want to use something like a bald cap to create hair. However, as you will see in just a little bit, there are great tools for actually removing the hair. Now, before we go ahead and start talking about those specific tools, let's talk a bit about the interface that we're going to be working with while using these interactive groom splines. Now, inside of the outliner, things are very simple. We pretty much just have this one description that we can click. You can see it's test 01. Now, it's over here on the right hand side that we're going to be primarily doing all of our work. And this is called the XGen Interactive Groom Editor. Now, I'm going to give you just kind of a quick warning that not everything we need is going to be found in here. We're also going to need the attribute editor, which is right here. You can see already there's a bunch of the settings. Let me go ahead and jump back to our interactive groom. And we're also going to need the tool settings over here. And that can be very difficult to keep jumping between those, especially when we sometimes need to see them both at once. So for that reason, they've actually given us a workspace specifically for this interactive groom editor. I'll go ahead and click here and choose the XGen Interactive Groom, and you'll see what this will do is give me that same menu up here we just saw, and below it, let me go ahead and just drag this down, I'll have my attribute editor and my tool settings. And that's going to just make it much easier to work with everything we need, and in case you need it, your channel box and your outliner can also be found up here. All right. Let's take a look at how all of this now breaks down in here. So you'll notice that if I go ahead and come into here, the first thing you'll see is it kind of has this interesting layer system. I even have these little eyeballs right here I can click, kind of like in Photoshop, where you can hide and unhide things. You can also kind of open these up here, and you can see there are several things within this description here. In fact, we'll kind of open up everything. You'll see that we have this Test01, we have this Sculpt, Within that, we have a sculpt layer, then we have this scale, and then we have this test 01 base. So let's see what all of these are. Now, for starters, the test 01, which is this top layer here that holds everything, if we go to the attribute editor over here and drag up, you can see that these are going to be kind of overall options. We have the width, or re rather the overall width. We have the taper of the hairs. You can see right there. Kind of thin those out. We can control the start of that taper, you can see right there. So now we can already kind of thin these hairs out maybe a little bit more, maybe that's what we want. We can turn on tube shading, you can see so they appear more cylindrical as opposed to flat. If we drop down here we also have the width ramp so I can control the thickness over the entire length of the hair right there. So again very similar to what we've seen in XGen. And if we scroll down here, we just have some preview options. For example, do we actually draw the control vertices or not? Uh, do we actually have certain splines highlighted? That's really not an issue at the moment, though. Uh, whether we actually see mesh voxels, we really won't get into that right now. And then you could see that we have our typical render stats, render settings, you know, whether it cast receives shadows, all the stuff we typically expect with any geometry. So you can see these are the big kind of broad uh, bits of information and uh, options that we're going to need. And again, that's going to be this top one here. If I drop down to Test01 Base here, you'll notice that this one is primarily for density. You can see I can control the density multiplier to increase the amount of hairs that I have, and all of a sudden I have quite a bit more. So I'll take that up even higher, I get even more hairs. Put that back to 1. 
You can also see I have a density mask here that I can paint, very similar to the ones that we have inside of XGen. So, and I also have a couple of other tools here. For example, I can use a place brush to add extra hairs, and I can also change the amount of vertices in each hair. Right now there's five, but I could, let's say, put in six or seven and rebuild them. We'll take a look at all of these settings a little bit later as we actually work with things such as the density brush. So next we have these two here. These are modifiers. We have a sculpt modifier and a scale modifier. The scale modifier controls the scale of the hair, which controls both the length and the width of the hair. You can imagine if you built a character, let's say at a 1 to 10 scale, and then you decided to bring that character up to, let's say, a 1 to 1 scale, you can just use this slider, and that way you can make your fur adjust for the scale of your character. So that's what that's there for. The sculpt modifier is going to hold sculpting information, and you can see there's actually a sculpt layer. You can think of this almost like sculpting inside of ZBrush. We can actually keep certain types of sculpting information on different layers and turn it on and off. To give you an idea, and we'll talk about these brushes in the next clip, I'm going to go ahead and do some quick sculpting here. Okay, and you can see that edit was on over here, and I can actually scrub this down and get rid of that edit or bring it back up, or even choose kind of a 50-50 point right there. And at any time, I can also turn this layer off entirely. So this Sculpt modifier can actually hold multiple Sculpt layers, and we will take a look at how we can produce those multiple layers. So that's pretty much the interface here. It's actually very easy to use, and we can, of course, have multiple descriptions, as we'll see later. We'll have one for eyebrows and the beard and stuff like that. Up here, you can see that I can add more modifiers, and we'll look at those later, as well as add additional sculpt layers. Up over here, you can see I can actually reorder these if I want to. I can reorder, let's say, the sculpt and the scale, and when we have more of those, it'll obviously be more useful. I can create new descriptions here. I can destroy descriptions or delete descriptions. And same thing up here. You see I can group them, delete them, duplicate them, create new ones, add modifiers, add sculpt layers everything we're typically expecting to have. So that's a quick look at our interface. Now, of course, the most exciting thing about this system is making use of these brushes. So in the next clip, let's start taking a look at all the different tools we have available to us to begin creating and styling this fur or hair or whatever you want to call it. So I'll see you all there.